Thanks for sticking around during the ads. Please feel free to click on the icons shown to be taken to areas where you can help us. All links will be below for mobile and other users. Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of TechFuse Snow. And today I am reviewing and showing some basics on how to set up a given fingerprint reader. So don't mess up the name, I'm just going to present you the name on the screen right now. But how this is going to work is I'm basically going to do a review, then the last part is going to be the setup. The reason why I'm doing it that way is so you can have it all in one, and plus on top of that, I really don't think you're going to get this product. At least after what I got to say about it. So, a while back, I am ran into a problem with a elderly person. They are having problems with putting in passwords. So, and plus on top of that, uh, I and many other people are having problems where keeping up with 200 or so passwords, which is virtually impossible, especially if you don't want to re reuse the same thing over and over and over. So a simple way to fix this is by a fingerprint reader. And I'm still going to be looking for this, but the one I chose was this one for right now. Well, during the reviews the other people had and many other things in the research, it looked like it was worthwhile, but nothing indicated these few things, which I'm going to talk about. So, as far as things go, apparently Apple, a while back, bought out this particular company, and this happens across the board. It, Google done it, so Google done it to quite a few companies I've used and, and made them disappear. And Apple's done it, obviously with this case and many others, and so on and so on. And what up happening is since Apple has bought out this particular company, unfortunately what's happened is their website and everything just disappeared. So it's virtually impossible to get drivers or more updated software and so on. And this is a huge problem when it comes to actually using this, especially with Chrome and Firefox because if you use Internet Explorer, okay, but most people don't. I don't, and uh, only government workers are the only ones I know who actually use it because they have to for their job. So with that in mind, I found this one to be pretty bad because the um, the, the stuff of Chrome. It, it kept popping up saying, hey, this might not be legit, which I'm not really sure if it really was because, again, their website went away, so I had to go through third-party methods just to get some software that looked legit. And um, on top of that, the uh, some of the stuff like with Firefox, it wouldn't even support the newer version of Firefox. So if you're going to end up using anything other than Internet Explorer, you're going to run into problems right then and there. It might work on OS X as far as that side of things, but on Windows, which is what most of the world uses, and I'm what I use on a day-to-day -day basis, I can tell you that this is an important thing where it better work with Chrome, Firefox, and many others. One of the other problems is uh, that I found with this is the um, it didn't work with applications like LastPass and several others, which wasn't a major deal breaker. I could deal with that, but the uh, it not being able to use with newer things, especially with Windows 8, where there's many applications, Windows 8, Windows 10, that are positioned to use APIs for fingerprint readers. I, um, if I can't use that, then 90% of what I could do with it is impossible. So that's a huge thing also. And, um, and lastly, it's just that there's security. Uh, so with the company being gone, I don't know how secure it is because you give enough time to anyone they can hack into any system. And yes, the software doesn't store your full fingerprint, but it stores a template and you can build on a template. So, with that in mind, I'm going to tell you to pass on this given product 
If you do know of any good fingerprint readers for Windows 8, Windows 10, Windows 7 that um, works across the board and works very well and is under $100, then let me know and I'll take a look at it. But anyways, uh, let's go into how to set this up so you can get a good idea. This is not a full setup because a lot of the problems I ran into, it, it, it's just that this is too old. And, um, and it didn't really age that well. It aged very fast. But anyways, I'll be right back. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go through the settings on how to set this up. And that way you can get the best experience out of this as possible. Now, one thing to keep in mind, I did skip over quite a bit of settings. The, when you first get the item, you will have to plug it in. Your computer or Mac has to detect it to get the driver and you do need to put a CD in to end up getting the software or go to their website and get the software for the device that you're using but after you set it up you do have to restart and then when you do restart once the software kicks on and for Windows I'm not really sure for Mac but for Windows it asks you for your username and password for the Windows machine itself. Once you put that in, the next step is going through here. And uh, you need to pick which one that you want for authentication. And uh, it gives you a description next to it. Then um, it shows you what to do. And with the fingerprint reader, just do the, uh, just slide it like you normally would. And by the end, it will tell you if it's worthwhile. So let's try something like that and see if I can trick the system. And like here I use multiple fingers so it can trick the system and get a negative result. So let's do one last time. And with this, we can tell it what fingers what. And keep in mind what hand are using. So let's go through that real quick. And the thing to keep in mind with this is since I, I'm pretty much going to pause it, but the thing to keep in mind is if your environment is dynamic, then sit back and then sit forward and do all that stuff so it gets a good feel of what, what to look for. But anyways, I'll be right back and uh, we'll continue to the next part. After you're done setting up that, you need to go to the center and you can go find that in the start. So from here, what you need to do is if you're planning to use the, the uh, thing that comes up whenever you swipe your finger over the scanner without anything being selected, the, uh, if you're planning to use this, then go down to user settings and you can change the skin. So for example, like that. Now, system settings, I don't really advise. You can go in there, but I don't advise really change anything in there unless you really see fit. You do need to press edit to change things in there. This, there's not much to it. Um, but as far as this goes, the other choices, you can start an application by swiping your fingerprint. Let's set that real quick. So, Let's do that. Let's say, um, so we selected the file and let's try it real quick. So open it up after I just swipe my finger and now was that so in case if you're like a um, 
financial person or whatever, and you're using spreadsheets or one of the people who uses a lot of programs and you switch from one program to the next constantly, that might be useful, but for me, I don't see a point in it, especially since the fact that, yeah, okay, I swipe my finger, but what needs to be happening is I should be able to like swipe my finger, my index finger three times to open up a program or maybe swipe, have a combination of three and that way it opens up programs without being on accident. So that's the thing for me, but that's up to you. File sharing, that's just basically a, uh, encrypting the file that you want and being able to lock it with both a password and a finger swipe. And then password bank, this, we're going to set this up with LastPass, but as it is right now, this doesn't work with the newer, it might work with the newer version of Firefox, but for me it said that there is no plugin for the newest version. So you might be able to find it for you, but I am really going to aim for LastPass since that's really what I use and I feel it's more secure overall. So for here, what I can do is, let's actually open up the Internet Explorer. And let's go to something like um, GitHub. And you'll get a dialogue like that. Don't worry about it. Let's just put in something random. And right here we'll get this dialog. If you want to save it, press yes. And then um, if you actually go back in here, let's close that out. You can see this right here. We can edit it if need to be. Delete. And to delete the entire thing, just go Ornament Size, Select, and Delete which I'll show you in a second. And um, what should end up happening is, is uh, when you swipe it, the, um, you can go down to the register sites and then you can go to the um, sign in and how I have my computer set up it will actually open up Chrome by default so I'm not going to show that but it will bring it up in here and fill it in like any other password thing now as far as things goes I was going to show you how to set this up with LastPass but as I said at the first part of this video which I just recorded a second ago turns out you can't do that and I think that has more of a driver issue than anything else and since I can't find a driver because their company is not around and I might have to go to and I've looked at it I pretty much would have to go to really sketchy things and getting a sketchy uh, getting, getting something that could be sketchy especially if it's a driver that's a horrible thing and you need to watch my hacking videos on top of that, given that it's I'm, I'm running to this many problems this quick, I'm just going to get a refund for it, or at least try. And I works on try to sell it on eBay. But for the most part, I don't think this is worthwhile. But if you do know of any, any worthwhile fingerprint reader under $100 for Windows, specifically Windows 8, Windows 10, then let me know and that way I can take a look at it. One thing I did forget to mention on this at start is there is some security advantages just on the hardware side of things. And a lot of people don't recognize this, but the reason why a lot of these fingerprint readers, they want you to swipe your finger and um, yeah, they're starting to move towards the like iPad, iPhone, where you can just touch it the reason why you don't really see that in industrial or anywhere else is, except for with mobile devices is simply that the what can happen is someone can go behind you take a piece of tape or whatever get your fingerprints and now they can 
either frame you or they can use it to get into the building or whatever it may be. So having it where you gotta uh, rub your finger across the scanner, that ensures that your fingerprint is not just sticking there. Whereas if you just press it right down, it's basically um, going to keep your fingerprint unless you do smudge it, which the fingerprint reader won't like. But anyways, as far as that goes, um, again, if you do know of any good fingerprint reader, it, it, and it's made mostly for Windows 8, Windows 10, then let me know and I'll take a look at it. But uh, all links will be, be down to, below, and um, hopefully you found this review educational and worthwhile, and hopefully it's helped you become a better shopper. My name is Craig Bennett. I'm the founder and owner, and I hope you have a great day.